morning, church. Good to see you. Happy Courageous Sunday. Tell you what, I am fired up and I'm excited. God is here, and it is always a great day to be in the house of the Lord, especially when you have some friends coming to visit you. I don't know if you were here on Friday night, but we watched Courageous, and it was awesome. And I forgot the emotional roller coaster that movie takes you on. Lots of laughs, and then boom, hits you with some truth and some tears. Of course, I just had something in my eye. I didn't, I didn't cry. But I want to share some things, and uh, today we're going to look at some courageous examples from Scripture in Joshua. But first, I've asked Rusty to be here, and Alex is with him as well, and we are so glad to have him. And if you saw the movie, you've, you recognize his face. In fact, if you've seen several movies, you've, you will recognize him. His testimony and his love for the Lord are awesome. And uh, Rusty, it's been awesome to see you today. So good to see you and Alex both. Um, He's going to share whatever God's laid on his heart. He shared with me just a little bit of it, and it is exactly what God has given me today as well to speak on. So Rusty, come on up, my man. Y'all give him a hand. Let him know you love him. Go get him, buddy. Love you, buddy. blast and being able to be back and do that again uh, is just bringing back a lot of memories and it's a it's a blessing to be here with you all so anyway I just want to share two stories with you um, as you guys know I was in the film courageous and being a part of courageous as a actor was a vastly different experience than any other thing I've been a part of um, I've been a part of some secular film sets with commercials a few films um, but mainly I've worked in Christian film specifically courageous was the biggest film I was a part of and what was so different about being on the set of Courageous and really any Sherwood film is the level of prayer and tenacity that they bring to try to do exactly what God calls them to do. Um, I looked up the definition for Courageous, uh, not the Merriam-Webster thing, but the Hebrew uh, definition of what Courageous means is a willingness to take action or an expression of effort. And keeping that in mind, it, just, it made me immediately think of the things that went on during my time on set. And so I'll just share a quick story about that and go into a little bit more about my personal testimony. But being on set of Courageous, uh, we saw Fireproof as a family. How many saw Fireproof? Facing the Giants, right? Great movies. And as a Christian actor, I looked at that and went, wow. Like, as a Christian actor, these are the films you wanted to be a part of because these guys were on the cutting edge of doing Christian filmmaking, out, you know, doing really great things and putting them out into actual theaters. It was awesome to think, like, maybe I could get as a, uh, you know, to be a part of this. And so I, my mom and my dad and me saw Fireproof. And as a long shot, my mom was like, okay, let me send down y'all's headshots and to the church and say, hey, we know you guys only use volunteers from your church for your films, but you ever decide to go outside the church where Christians were actors and we'd love to be a part of your movies? This is a long shot. So we did that. And about a year later, God opened the door to where we got contacted by Sherwood, my dad and I saying, hey, we have two roles we haven't filled yet. Would you guys like to audition for them? And we were like, yes, thank you. So we auditioned, we did a little Skype audition and then we did a call back. And long story short, we ended up getting the parts. And my dad was also in the movie. He played the factory owner that put Javier through those moral tests to see if he was gonna have integrity and then actually gave him a promotion. That was the part that my dad got to play. So what was really interesting and neat, which I talk days about is the fact that my dad and I got to be a father-son team on a movie about fatherhood. You know, we got to help each other with acting, with lines, preparing for a scene. And in fact, the main scene where I, you know, break down at the, at the dinner table, he helped me prepare for that scene emotionally, trying to bring out some emotions that I could use for that. So really great bonding experiences for us that I have carried with me throughout my whole life. But the main thing that really touched me as an actor and as all, most, most of all as a Christian was being a part of Sherwood Films. You know, it takes two years to make a film because you have six months of post or I mean pre-production then you have two to three months of actual filming and then you have up to a year of post-production where they actually edit the film together with Sherwood they normally add another year onto that uh, both before and after and that is just prayer time dedicated to trying to find the exact message that God is trying to get them to produce to create so they will not move on a project until they've got a word from God they will not write the project until they got a word from God they will not come up with the content and the uh, the actual um, 
script until they got a word from God. They won't hire the people unless they got a word. They wait on God. And it's amazing because that's that takes a lot of faith to do that because in filmmaking, everything's got to be on time, going fast, moving through. And there were times where things didn't happen on set until the last possible second, but it could not have worked out any more perfectly. And so just the faith that was exercised by these people. And the big thing was is that they had a team on set dedicated to prayer. Uh, they were known as the prayer team. And their entire job of being on set was to walk around during filming and pray for the actors, pray for the set, pray for the crew, pray over the scenes. And I mean, for those of you who have seen Kratos, I think we can agree that there is a, a massive spiritual impact that comes through that film. And I think I, I can attest that to the fact that they set their sights on God and allowed prayer to guide what they did with their um, filmmaking. There's a lot of courageous effort on there, on their part. So that was just, uh, that's a little bit about what it was like being on set, you know. Everywhere you'd walk, you'd walk up to somebody like, hey, how can I be praying for you? You know, what's going on? How's the scene going? And very, you know, very conversational, wasn't anything crazy about it. But at every moment, they were looking to try to make sure that you were in the right place, that God was working in your life personally, uh, through the film and through the people that were on set. It was a, it was a very touching experience being on that film set. And Every film set I've been on since then ha has not done the same thing, you know, on that level. I mean, they had a crew of probably 500 people. It was just, it was an experience to be a part of. Um, absolute blast. But I want to talk a little bit about my own personal story of courageous faith and just willingness to take action and effort in a direction that God was calling me to. Uh, I started acting when I was nine years old. I did a little school play and fell in love with it. And before then, I'd watched the behind the scenes on movies and had loved watching the behind the scenes. So I would see this entire crew of diverse people come together and work as a team and become a family and make a story that was touching. And I, I love to tell stories. I'm a storyteller. So watching that just ignited in me a passion to go, wow, I want to do that. So my parents, thankfully, I was blessed to have two parents that came behind me and said, hey, we're going to help you in this journey to do this. Because, I mean, it wasn't sports. It wasn't baseball or soccer. It was different. It was acting. You know, where do you even start with that? So thankfully, my mom took a head. Uh, she became like my manager and started working through these things, got me the role in Courageous and several other roles after that. Um, and I did that up till I was 20 years old. So I did it for 11 years. Uh, and it was one of the greatest experiences of my life. But it was a, it was a season of my life because towards the end of that, time of being in acting, um, about 20 years old, about 19, I really started asking questions. I was like, okay, I've done acting for a decade now. And uh, I don't know, I feel like I'm supposed to be doing something else in my life. And I, and I could not, I, I didn't have anything, any other experiences I hadn't, I've only done school and acting, that's it. So I didn't have anything to fall back on like, okay, let me try this. I, I didn't know. I was left there standing at a crossroads, <laughs> kind of like, okay, God, I need a sign, like a big arrow in the sky, which didn't necessarily come like that. It was close. Um, but I was just asking all these questions of where God wanted me to go in my next journey, where he wanted me to go. And I was at a film convention in California um, uh, talking about one of my new films that had come out called Jackson's Run. And I was there and I sat down for breakfast. And long story short, the, the convention just was not working out well. It just wasn't going well. So I was like, okay, I guess this is another reason why I don't want to do acting, I guess, anymore. It's just it wasn't working out well. And during breakfast, a gentleman sat down beside my dad and I and just struck up a conversation with him. And I started talking with him and he said, uh, he asked me what I was doing. I was doing an online business degree because I was just trying to do an online college focus right now so I could focus on my acting. And he said, have you ever thought about agriculture? What? <laughs> acting, agriculture. I mean, that, that's, that's pretty far extremes, right? That's, that's pretty large gap there. I'm like, uh, no, no, sir, I, I have not thought about agriculture. I'm pursuing a business degree right now. He's like, oh, okay, that's great. And just kind of didn't take that as a knowledge of like, okay, stop talking. He was like, okay. And so he spent the next 40 minutes talking to me about agriculture. And by the end of it, he left. And I looked him up. He's a real person. He's not an angel, but it was, it, it felt like a pretty amazing experience. And so I looked him up and he owns his own agricultural company in South Africa. I was like, no way. I was like, okay, the guy in South Africa just happens to be in California, sits down, talks to my dad. And you start stringing these together and go, this is not a coincidence. This has to be a sign that God, that I've been asking for. And, but still, going from acting to agriculture is a big jump. And I'm standing there, again, at a crossroads going, you know, God, this is pretty convincing. But I'm not sure that this is where you want me to, is, is this really where you want me to go? And I just, I kept just feeling kind of this pressure on me to go to it. I was like, all right, fine, I'm gonna cave, I'm gonna go for it. But I don't know if this is gonna work out. You know, I went, I went for it, but a little unwilling at first. And I was met with a lot of adversity. You know, I, I didn't have anybody guiding me through applying to college. I, didn't, I wasn't part of school anymore. So I had to apply to NC State, go pack, 
Any other PAC fans? Woo! Okay, sweet. All right, we can be friends. Um, <laughs> but I applied to go to NC State, and it was a process. I mean, it was a six-month process trying to get applied into there. And I had to go in during the spring semester. I got into a two-year program, and instantly I fell in love with agriculture. I fell in love with the mission of it. I fell in love with the passion behind it, with the drive to bring something that people need every single day. And I just had this moment one day where I was standing there and going, how did I get here? How in the world did I go from acting and doing things in California and being in Christian films to here in agriculture? And I just realized that, you know, at every turn that I was met with adversity, God was just giving me a little direction, a little shift, a little shift into the right direction. And I don't know why I'm here studying agriculture at NC State University, but I know I'm exactly where I need to be. And so I just want to encourage you guys that, you know, when God calls you to do something, He's not just looking for obedience. You know, the definition of courage I just said was willingness to take action. It's obedience and action is what being courageous is about. You know, and I was skeptical, but I, I pushed forward. I tried to make a decision that was my best guess, that I felt like I could go for. And I walked down that road and it, it's turning out well. It's turning out into something that I think is the right path for me. Again, don't know why I'm here, but that's okay, because I know that God is behind me. He's got my back. He's watching over me. And so I just want to leave you guys with four quick things real quick for no matter what stage of life you're at. For some of you, you're, you're going to agree with me immediately on this. You're going to have to make decisions for the rest of your life. For those who are younger, you have to make decisions starting now all the way to the end of your life. For those of you who are a little bit older, you understand that every day you guys make decisions about what you're going to do, who you're going to be, where you're going to go. And some steps on how to make those decisions, some steps on why making those decisions under this context is important. My first step is like, know that God has your back. The way I describe it is every morning God wakes up, which he doesn't sleep, but he wakes up, you know, for this metaphor. His first priority, his biggest excitement for waking up that day is you. He wakes up in the morning. He says, I want to see you succeed. I want to see her succeed. That's his that's his mission objective every morning when he wakes up. You're his biggest priority. So he's got your back. He's watching out for you. And everything that you try to do, he just wants to shower blessings on you. You're his child. He wants to give you all the good that he has, right? So starting there, knowing that you can't go wrong because you have the God of the universe behind you saying, hey, I got you. Just keep going. That lets you know that God has your back. So trust him. Number two, just trust him that he will catch you if you fall. He'll catch you if you take a left or a right. It's something my girlfriend and I talk about all the time is there's a big difference between right and wrong decisions and right and left decisions. And many times we get hung up on the right and left thinking that they're right and wrong. But really God's standing there saying, I'm giving you a choice. Pick one and I'll go with you either way. I'm not going to leave you if you go to the left. I'm not going to leave you if you go to the right. I'm going to be just as close to you each path you take because I can work through anything. And that's the third thing is that God can redeem anything. No matter if it's a good circumstance, a bad circumstance, God can stand there and say, I want to take this situation and use it for my glory. You know, again, I don't know why I'm here in agriculture, but I know I'm on the right path because God is with me. He's led me here specifically. He's, he's met me when there were times in my life where I got to the end of my rope, like, okay, I think this is it. I don't think I can do this anymore, God. I don't know if I, I want to, you know, play this game where I'm trying to figure out what you're going to get me to do. He would step in and give me a little blessing just to keep going to the next day, to the next day, to the next day. Uh, an example of that, I met this wonderful girl here named Alex. We've been dating for a year and a half now. She's awesome. And she helps challenge me to drive closer to Christ. She came in, you know, a year and a half ago. And then also about a year ago, I was able to get a scholarship because of my dad being in the military. Um, and it happened around a time where I was like, I had a major, ag business management. And I was, I was going through and I was like, mm, I don't know if this is right. I don't know if this is the right degree. And I decided to change major. So I'm double majoring now, ag business, ag science. And so now that tacked on another two or three years, I'm like, how am I going to pay for this? You know, how am I going to do this? And then God met me with a scholarship from my dad being in the military, which we had no knowledge about at all, just happened at the appointed time to where now I'm able to continue to go to college basically for free now. My, my tuition is paid for so I can continue this study that I have. So again, I, I was at a turning point going, I don't know if this is the right way. And God said, no, just a little longer, just a little, keep going, keep going. I, I got great things in store. Keep trusting me. So I kept following. And just for anyone who's in, at a place in their life where they're making a decision, just be faithful and go for it. Again, like I said, there's left and right decisions. God's asking us to move. He's always asking us to move. He never tells us to stay in one place. Uh, an example that my dad uses all the time when he was in the Navy and he was doing charts for ships. If you're driving a ship, um, 
that ship has to be moving before you can turn it, right? But also, in addition to that, a ship has to be moving before you can give it some directions. And those directions, if you give one little tick mark, that turns into a thousand miles over time, right? One decision that you can make now can totally put you in a different place, for good or for worse, right? But if we understand the knowledge that God is behind us, that he has our back, he's willing to redeem anything that we do, we can't go wrong as his children because he's going to stand with us, encourage us, and turn anything that we put our hands to, he's going to turn it into something for his glory as long as we keep him first. So if you're at a decision, be faithful and go for it. Do something. If it's not necessarily you know, the right thing, that's okay because God's got your back and he's going to turn your path to where you need to go. But be courageous. Be obedient in action. Make an effort to do that. Um, I think that's all I, I had to say from just personal examples of my life being a part of filmmaking and then going the complete 180 direction, in my opinion, and yet finding where I think I'm supposed to be. So I just want to encourage you all with that. I'll let Matt come back up here. But thank you guys so much for letting me come out for the day. Awesome. Thank you, Rusty. What a tremendous testimony. And maybe you didn't know this, but he actually came and spent an hour of his own time with all of our kids this morning. And it was fantastic. They were hanging, they were packing in the room, hanging out the door. And it was awesome. They were hanging on every word. Thank you. God bless you for your faithfulness. That is absolutely perfect for what God gave me this week. And he didn't know this. But what we're talking about today is courage and the difference between thinking we have a courageous faith and actually walking it. And this is absolutely beautiful, what, how this dovetails. How many have ever heard the name Charles Blandin, or Blandon, he's French, he's a French guy. Blandon, Blandin, I don't know how to say it. Here's a picture of him, maybe this will ring a bell. Come, yes, and see, it's, blond, it's Blandin if you said it in English, but it's not, it's French, and French is weird, so it's probably Blandin or something like that. But we'll just call him Blondie for today. This is Charles. And Charles leapt to fame because he had a dream. He had a goal, and nothing was going to stop him. His goal was to cross Niagara Falls on 11,000 feet of cable. That's over a quarter mile. He, all the way across, he wanted to walk it, but he wanted to do something no one had ever done. He wanted to do it multiple times and sell tickets to come, not only on America's side, but on Canada's side, those wascally northerners. And he had them lined up. And they even charged admission a whopping 25 cents to come and spend the afternoon watching him do these feats. And each time he would walk across, he would change it up, and he would get across. And when he finished, he'd hand off his pole, and he'd say, how many believe I can do something even greater? And the crowd's like, ah, we believe you're the greatest. Woo. How many believe I can do blank? And he would, he would just jack up his daring feet. This next time, he went off on a bicycle. And he got all the way across the side on a bicycle, and he handed it off. He says, how many believe I could do something even greater? And they started cheering, and they were screaming and having a great time. He says, how many believe I could do something so amazing? I'm going to walk across on stilts this time. How many believe I could do that? And they're like, you can do it. You can do it. It's your life, so you go. And, and he went, and then he did it all the way back. He did it blindfolded. He, I mean, it was crazy. One time, he even packed a small stove on his back, got to the middle of the rope, 160 feet above the Raging Falls, stopped, put the stove on the wire, and cooked an omelet. True story. You can look it up. Cooked an omelet. Who does this? So people are starting to buy into him, and they're starting to have great faith in Blondin. And he gets to the end, and he says, how many believe I can top that? And they're like, you can do it. And the crowd's going wild, and they're having a great time. We believe you're the best. You're the best. He says, how many believe for my biggest feat that I can take this wheelbarrow loaded down with hundreds of pounds of potatoes all the way across, even while the wind from the falls is starting to pick up. And they cheered and they screamed. I said, you could do it. You could do it. And he did. And he had these potatoes in there. It was hundreds of pounds. And, and he, he struggled across. And one time it got a little dicey for him. And then he made it all the way to Canada. And he said, how many believe I could take these potatoes out? And do this again with a full-grown, live human. <sighs> we believe you're the best, you're the greatest. He says, all right, who will get in the wheelbarrow? <laughs> oh, and that crowd was strangely silent. 
all the hands went down. All, you can hear crickets. Well, what, 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 what happened? You just saw me do these great, amazing feats. Where's your faith now? You're the best. You're the best. Well, I come and I say, come on in. Who wants to put their faith in action and all the hands go down? Wow. These people who were just minutes ago the bravest people in the world when it was his life, when it was his courage that they were cheering on, suddenly they're not so brave. All of a sudden, when it came time to demonstrate their faith, they shrink. And that faith suddenly becomes a whole different thing from applauding someone doing something bold and courageous to living it for yourself. Oh, well, that changes everything. And Joshua had to deal with this exact problem. He followed Moses in his line of secession. Who wants to follow Moses? Turn with me to Joshua chapter 1. I want to look at this. We're just going to look quickly at, at four quick things that, that you can learn from Joshua. Chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. I'm going to read from the CSB translation today. While you pull that up, let me welcome those who are streaming with us. It's great to have you online each and every week as well. Joshua chapter 1. Verses 1 through 9, follow along together, and it says, After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now you and all the people prepare to cross over the Jordan to the land I am giving the Israelites. Verse 3, I have given you every place where the sole of your foot treads, just as I promised Moses. Your territory will be from the wilderness in Lebanon to the great river, the Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites and west to the Mediterranean Sea. No one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. I will be with you just as I was with Moses. I will not leave you. I will not abandon you. Be strong and courageous. For you will distribute the land I swore to their fathers to give them as an inheritance. Above all, here it is again, be strong and very courageous to observe carefully the whole instruction my servant Moses commanded you. Don't turn from it to the right or the left so that you will have success wherever you go. This book of instruction must not depart from your mouth. Get this. You are to meditate on it sometimes. Oh, yours doesn't say day and night. You are to meditate on this day and night so that you may be careful to observe everything written in it. For then you will prosper and succeed in whatever you do. Haven't I commanded you? Be strong and courageous. There it is again. Don't be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Be bold, be strong, be courageous. He says it three times. In fact, if you read on over in verse 18, he says it again. Be strong, be courageous. You think maybe he wants, wants you to pick up on that? that? This, this is, is a beautiful, beautiful passage, but can, can you imagine, imagine being in Joshua's Jesus? Jesus? Mike Turner, Turner is a fellow is a pastor, pastor over in Georgia. Georgia. He, once he once wrote about, about this passage years ago, and he said this. this. I have a question for you. Can you really imagine having to fill the shoes of Moses? Can you imagine having to take his place? The legend. You want to talk about an unenviable position. This man, the man who took out a rod, touched the water, and it split. And everybody could flee safely. This man who could take a rod, throw it down, have it turn into a snake, and then pick it up by the tail, and it turns back into a stick again. Or the same man who could take a, a, a rod and strike a rock, and water flows out in the desert and feeds thirsty thousands. How do you want to follow that guy? Or the guy who just has casual conversations with the creator in a flaming bush, and the bushes have burned up. This is incredible. Who wants to follow that? And then to add to it, Joshua has the tough job of now being the leader of a people who, let's just be honest, love to murmur and complain and backslide and had this cycle of sitting and getting back with God and sin. And they just, nah, 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 grumble, grumble. I liked it better in Egypt. Can we go back? We had muffins in Egypt. It was awesome. Joshua's not like Moses. Joshua rearranges the chairs every week in the worship center, and Joshua just does these crazy things, and it's so cold. And... Oh, wait, what? And uh, <clears throat> you got to follow the legend. And God shows up and says, Joshua, the plan's not done. Everything I promised to Moses, everything I swore, I will swear to you. We're not done. 
We, you, you, Moses did great. I'm not knocking him. He's awesome. But now you are the man. <laughs> I want you to take the promised land has yet to be seized. There are inhabitants in there that you got to drive out. There are battles that you still need to win. I need you to be the one to go. You need to go. How in the world is Joshua going to do this? How does he manage to have courage like that? How do we do great things for God? How? The exact same way Moses did. You follow the Lord's leading. God ordained him for such a time as this. And God will ordain you. Where he guides you, he provides for you. That's his nature. He doesn't leave us as orphans. How much better with our fathers will the heavenly father relate to us? So in this passage, God shows us three times, be strong, be courageous, be strong, be courageous, be very strong and very courageous. And we think, that sounds easy. We'll just be bold, right? We'll just flex. Yeah, I got this. I'm going to be bold. I'm going to, yeah, devil, I'm going to. That's not what, see, it's easy to claim to be bold. It's easy to fake courage. The great Adrian Rogers, love him, pastor at Bellevue. Before he went on to be with the Lord, he once shared a story about a man who was puffed up with pride. He was bragging about how strong and courageous he was. In fact, he bragged that he once cut the tail off of a man-eating lion with his pocket knife. Something didn't sound right. And someone questioned him and said, why didn't you just cut off the, the head of the roaring lion? He said, well, someone had already done that. <laughs> oh, it's real easy to brag. I'll cut the tail off of it. Well, when it's dead... Where's the courage in that? That's fake courage. This is not what Joshua needed. He was leading thousands and hundreds of thousands of people. This is not the time to fake it till you make it. They're looking to him. This is the time for him to step up to be bold and courageous and show that where God guides, he provides. And God wants us in the society we live in to be bold and courageous today. Not to look back at some pantheon of great heroes and go, well, that was then. God has big and bold things for us to accomplish today. Time is short. Look around. Look at the culture. How quickly it degrades. Look right here at verse 3. Notice the very, very first thing he says. He says, I have given you every place where the sole of your foot treads, just like I promised Moses. What an awesome promise. How reassuring. Though God's servant Moses is now gone, his plans and his promises are the same. And that's the first lesson we can learn right here from Joshua. Stand on the promise. Stand on the promise that God gives you. Stand on the promises of his word. When he makes promises, he keeps them. And that's a beautiful thing. And we don't like that because that means we're supposed to be like him in that. And people let us down. People make promises all the time and break them. But the same God who was the God of Moses and was the God of Joshua is also, also the same, same God. God. And, he and he still, still wants, wants us to stand on, on his promises. promises. There's an old saying that says, the problem with so many modern Christians today is that we're content to be sitting on the premises rather than standing on the promises. That's pretty good, but maybe it's a little close to home because sometimes we get so content with our life and the little territory that we've staked for God that we don't ever stop. Like Rusty was sharing, saying, God, I'm at a crossroads. Is there something bigger? Am I missing something? I read about all these great people in the, in the great hall of fame you can read Hebrews and see all these great legends. And go, I mean, that, that just had to be for them. No, God still has promises he wants us to stand on. If you look at Joshua, you see next we're supposed to sense his presence. Sense the presence of God right there with you because he will not forsake you. He declares it. He will not strand you. He will not leave you. Every place the sole of his foot touched became their land. And Joshua knew that God was with them. His presence was right there. There was no need to fear. No need to be dismayed, which we often get. There was no need to be frightened. One summer night, there was a young boy who was freaking out because the thunderstorm had rolled in much stronger than they anticipated. And the lightning was streaking across the sky, and it was time for bed. And mom said, you need to get in bed. Will you tuck me in? Yes. And he goes, and he lays down, and the mom tucks him in, gives him a kiss, and goes to turn out the light. He says, Mommy, please sleep with me tonight. Will you please? Sweetie, you know I can't sleep with you. Please, I'm scared. She goes over, she tucks him back in, kisses his forehead, and says, you are going to be fine. Just trust God. She goes to turn, turns off the light, walks out. Mommy, please, will you please sleep with me tonight? Sweetie, you know I can't sleep with you. I have to sleep with your father. He looked down and said, Daddy is such a sissy. <laughs> It's easy to fake courage. God won't leave us. 
God won't forsake us. Not only do we sense the presence of God near and around us, but really in us. If you're believers, then the Holy Spirit has taken up residence in our heart. He has sealed us for the day of redemption. That is the deposit. He is coming, the comforter. We looked at this last week. When God calls us to do something, his word says he won't leave us, he won't forsake us. That's how we know we can be bold. In verse 7, we see that Josh was told if he wants to be strong and courageous, he must also do one more thing. Stay on the path. Ooh, this is a doozy. Here's why this is so tough. He is told, don't turn. Look left, don't look right. Here is the path. Walk in. Don't compromise. Don't be overcome with distractions. Don't be detoured with all the little shiny bobbles and bangles and things over here. I've given you a mission, and I want you to accomplish this mission. Stay on the path. Do not turn to the right or the left, it says, so that you will have success wherever you go. He must stay on God's path. The key here, don't miss this, is faithfulness. Faithfulness. Another word we like to say, but it's much harder to practice. Staying faithful when all around you fall. It's tough. Stop. Stay, Stay faithful faith when the world, world is saying, what are you doing? You're so odd. I can't believe you. Believe the things you believe. You. Christmas is just so... That's that term. Stay, Stay faithful. faithful. This, this, is, this is, is one of the keys. Don't miss this. Stay faithful with what God has called you to do, even when it's tough, even when everyone else tries to give up. We just finished the World Series. I don't know if we got any baseball fans here, but... Maybe you are, and if you like the Yankees, then you may remember a legend by the name of Ralph Houck. And he played for him, and then he became the manager. And he was a legendary manager back in the days when baseball men were burly men. And now we're talking like just right after Babe Ruth and all these huge guys. And their schedule was not like the schedule today. Their baseball schedule was nonstop, where doubleheaders were commonplace all the time. And it was brutal, and it was a grind. And it started to wear out shoulders, and it started to hurt people. People, they just had to go. They weren't making millions and millions. Of and it wasn't uncommon for a baseball player to go up to the manager and say, please, please, sir, can I have a game? Just one game. Guess what the man This is beautiful how he He would smile at him. He would nod. And he wouldn't say no. He'd say, absolutely, I understand how you feel. I totally, I totally understand, understand how you're doing. Take, Take the day off. But, but do me a favor. I've already got you in the starting line. line. You're in the you're prime, prime slot tonight. Can, can you, you just, just play, play one in the game? Can you do that? And then after that, take the day off. Take the game off. Inevitably, every single player agreed to the request. And they would play that one in and guess what happened? They would get caught up in the spirit of the game Realize why, why they played play the game in the first place, place and, before and before they knew it, they had stayed and had finished the entire game. game. Church, that's deep. There, there is a lesson, lesson in this. When, when you, you feel, feel like, like giving up, when you're tired, tired of the grind, man, I get it. I get it. Don't look at eating the elephant. It's a bite at a time. Just take the next step. Stay on the path. When you feel like giving up, when you feel like giving in, just like Joshua, stay on the path until the end. Until God gives you a different crossroads, stay faithful. Because remember this, here is your nugget. God blesses faithfulness. Look at his word. God honors that. When you honor him, God blesses faithfulness. Stay faithful. I know it's hard. Don't quit. Don't leave the path. Don't compromise what you know is true. And that is a word for somebody here today. People come up, oh, pastor, you're preaching this. I don't know who this is. This is for somebody today. Somebody here is being faced with a compromise. Don't compromise what you know is true. Stay faithful. Stay bold. Stay courageous. Compromise will lead to chaos in your life. Trust me. <laughs> compromise leads to chaos. Nobody wants that in your life. All these distractions that try to get us to the right, to the left, get off the path, these distractions lead to destruction. Okay? I'm going to write it easy so you can remember this. And those things need to be put in the proper light of being faithful because faithfulness is what leads to fulfillment. You want a fulfilled life? Stay faithful to God. Resist this culture. Resist this tide that wants to pull you off the road to the left and to the right. Faithfulness leads to fulfillment. So if I can issue one challenge for us to take with us today. You want to be courageous? Start the process. Ooh, this, this is not just a quote from Nick Saban. It's not about, about process. process. Start, Start the process. process. Look, Look at what happened in verse 11. 11. God, God shows up. He basically says, go. Get, 
Get ready, get, ready, get, get set, set, go. Go, go through, through the, the camp, camp and tell the people, people Joshua, Joshua, get your get provisions ready for yourself, for, yourself, for within three, three days, days you're going to be crossing the Jordan, Jordan and you are going to take possession of the land. land. Can you imagine? His predecessor didn't do it. And all these legends, he's like, I'm not doing it. We're doing this? No, you're doing it in 72 hours. Go. 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 No, Notice what it does. Joshua, Joshua fully believed in God. Said, and then he takes a step. This is what I'm talking about. This is where it goes from just belief, you can do it, to demonstrating it. He doesn't delay. Joshua goes. He tells the people, get ready. Notice there's no hesitation. As soon as he receives his orders from the Lord, he doesn't take a poll. He doesn't form a committee. He doesn't have a committee on committees. He just goes. He doesn't delay. Because when we delay, that sometimes breeds reluctance. It's easier to, I don't know if God really said that. I'm not really sure God wants me to do that. And reluctance, mm, reluctance can turn into disobedience. Because God gave us a marching order. And we dilly-dallied. And we ended up over here instead of what he called us to do. How about you in your life? Are you there? Like Joshua, may we begin our journey with bravery, courage. Get on the path. God is for you. He is not against you. He has given us this verse. Be bold. Be courageous. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. It's not it's just, just enough, enough anymore, anymore, church, to just, just believe, believe it. it. It's not, it's just, not just, just enough to know the word of God, to occasionally seek his counsel. Occasionally seek his presence. We'll come and we'll assemble a little bit. We're supposed to put into action what he's given us to do. Joshua, Joshua begins, begins the process, and, and he, he takes, takes action, action, and he, he starts, starts moving forward, forward the way God has called him to do. So I got to ask, how about us? How are you doing with that? Are you sensing his presence? Today, we've sensed his presence. We've sung to him. We've worshiped him. We've heard truth expounded from his word. We're looking for his leading, but are we just sitting there waiting? Are we still on pause we're still sitting, waiting for, for that, that, I'm not so sure. What are we waiting for? And if God has revealed it, be bold, be courageous. There's ground to cover. There's battles to be won. There's jobs needing to be done. And time is short. Let's pray together. God, I thank you for the power of your word. It is so timeless. You always have fresh truth for us. Lord, whether it's an applicable message for Joshua or whether it's something that stands the test of time where we can observe lessons, God, I pray that we will begin the process and not be left sitting on go. God, we want to be busy, but we don't want to be busy just doing our thing. We want to be about your business. So, Lord, for those of us, myself included from time to time, who may see the fog instead of the sunlight, I pray you would reveal your path to us today. I pray that you would show us what the next step is, that we would be able to be bold, that we would be courageous. Lord, for that person who is waiting today, just asking, Lord, would you show us the way? I pray you would do it today. God, let today be a breakthrough. Let today be a day where we're no longer just wandering around to the left or the right, but you highlight the path like sunshine coming down on the road. Show us the next step you have for us. And God, let us be faithful. Help us be faithful. Increase our faithlessness. Show us and give us the boldness to walk and follow you. That is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.